Hey everyone, and welcome to today's video tutorial all about Skype in the Classroom and the Microsoft Educator community. My name is Jed Derryberry. I'm a Skype Master teacher here in South Carolina in the United States. And for the next few minutes, we're going to talk about the educator community, how it can benefit you in the classroom, and the Skype in the Classroom um, area of the community specifically that will help you in connecting your classroom globally via Skype lessons, mystery Skype, virtual field trips, and guest speakers that can come in your classroom via Skype. Um, we're starting today's video call from our video tutorial from Skype.com. Okay, that is your first step um, into utilizing the educator community and um, all that is Skype in the classroom. You need to go to Skype.com and download the Skype software. A lot of people ask me, what's the difference between Skype and Skype in the classroom? Honestly, there's no difference. Um, you may have heard of Skype a long time before now, um, basically, Skype in the classroom is just um, teachers around the world taking the tool of Skype and using it in their classroom. So your first step to becoming a globally connected educator is go to Skype.com, download the Skype, click here. Um, that will open up the different options there that you can download it. You find your user system, um, you find your um, device, whatever it is, and download the um, a correct version of Skype just for you. Now, once you get that all downloaded and you create your Skype username, you want to remember that Skype username because you're going to use that later um, in this video tutorial. So if you want to stop the tutorial, go download Skype if you don't have it, get your username and then come back. That might be a great thing for you to do. Um, so once you uh, have your Skype username, you want to go to education.microsoft.com. Again, it's education microsoft.com and that's where you're going to go to the educator community um, when you get here if you're not a member um, it's going to prompt you to join now there's several different ways that you can join when you click on join now you'll see that if you have an office 365 account a microsoft email such as a hotmail which i still have um, or your skype facebook or twitter um, and remember i said you wanted to use your skype username that's the way that i log in um, but before you do that, you're going to give us a little bit of information, your name, first and last, what country, your language that is your primary language. Um, time zone is very important. we got to know where in the world you are, so we, making connections easier for you. Um, if you're on the other side of the planet, it might be a little bit harder for you to work out what time to connect, so we need to know that. And your profile status, if it's public, private, the community members only, decide which one you want to be. Check the box here for being over 18 years old and then you're going to join the community. Um, I log in every single time with my Skype user ID. So I click here and I type in my Skype username um, and password and then it logs me in and once I'm logged in I go to this page right here. This is where you will see the Microsoft Educator Community homepage here and um, it says welcome to the edu community this educator community and the way that i know that i'm logged in here is i see my little profile picture that i've already created when you guys are new here you're going to need to go to my profile and it'll prompt you all this as you're creating your um, account but when you go to my, pro my, my profile you're going to have a profile page it's very similar to any other social media that you've been a part of um, if you want to change anything on your profile you hit edit profile um, but here you can see that someone could add me on Skype, they can follow me on Twitter, they can view my Facebook profile, I've linked those together to this account. Um, got a little biographical information about me, categories that I'm interested in using uh, for Skype in the classroom, like if I want to be a guest speaker, you don't have to be, but I threw that out there uh, for people to contact me. A little history about myself, some pictures of myself, shows a map of my Skype activity, things like that at the bottom. And all this is built as you create your profile account. You want to make sure you do that right away because that's going to be the way that people meet you um, in the educator community. That's their first impression of you. Um, be sure to add a picture. I love to see pictures of the people that I'm connecting with there. Um, so it's important that you build that um, right from the get-go. Now, once you um, build that, you see over here on the left-hand side of your screen all these different options that the Microsoft Educator Community has for you. I encourage you to come and, and click on every one of these and find out what all of these little buttons are about. There's courses and lessons and, and things about Microsoft that you can click on and learn. Let's just click on this one here and there's all different um, kind of courses uh, from Microsoft. Microsoft in the Classroom, Microsoft in Education, our MIE Trainer Academy, Microsoft Innovative 
um, expert um, training. You can learn about what it, uh, what you need to do to become an MIE. Um, there's just tons of lessons and courses in here for you to do. Um, but today specifically, we're going to look at um, once you become a part of the community, how to utilize the Skype in the classroom portion. So if you click on the Skype in the classroom portion, that will open you up to um, the Skype in the classroom landing page in the community. And when you get here, you're going to see four different kind of lessons that are here for you um, to use. Now, I want to just start showing you uh, very briefly. We're just going to move across here the Skype lessons, the virtual field trips, and uh, Mystery Skype and the guest speaker. So let's just click on one of these. It'll open it up. Um, the first thing I want to show you before we do anything else is each of these options, um, all four of the unique uh, uh, Skype experiences we have, you can select the filter here and you can filter out lessons based on your age group, your subject. If you want to look for lessons specifically on a Microsoft product, you can do that. Um, if you want to find somebody's availability in Skype that matches your time zone, um, skill development specifically that you're looking for, project-based learning, creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, communication. If you want to look somebody for a specific region, a country, a part of the world, um, a specific language, you can do all of that, okay? So today I'm going to focus on um, just, uh, I taught first and second grade, so I'm going to um, click on uh, projects that are um, specific for that age group. So I I click on here, Skype with I and sing around the world. That sounds pretty cool. It's coming up. You might want to be a part of that. Um, you can click on that lesson. And once you do, you can read about it. There's different, uh, sometimes the pictures there, trouble loading there. But if you wanted to be a part of this, you hit request for this session. When you do that, it's going to come up just very quickly with a calendar of opportunities. Now you see that their availability is open on the blue days. That means they could work around your schedule. The, on the green days, they have specific availability, um, and the purple day is the day that you've selected. So let's say next uh, week on the 28th of November, I want to um, see when that lesson is available. So I click on the 28th, and you see these are times that are available. Let's say I, I have a class at 1 o'clock um, on, a, Tuesday, on a, a Monday. Click that, and I can request the session. Now, before I send it, if I want to add a little message to the presenter, um, uh, Gandhi here, I can click on that box and send a message along with it to request that session. Once I hit request the session, it will send a message to Donnie selecting, uh, asking that we um, connect over Skype and that we have um, build this uh, Skype experience for our students. So that's that Donnie would come on the Skype and teach us a lesson. So it'd be a really unique opportunity for my students there. Okay, um, some other opportunities that you have on the home page are the mystery Skype. If you've never played Mystery Skype, I encourage you to sign up today and get one of these going in your classroom. You're going to love it. Mystery Skype is basically um, 20 questions between you and another classroom somewhere in the world. The teachers know where each other are, but the students don't. And you're trying to logically deduce where each other are um, through this series of yes or no questions. So again, let's utilize the filter search. I want to search for my age group again. I'm just going to click on that. I wanted to show you how to do that. Um, here's a teacher here. If, um, if I wanted my kids to connect with that. Um, I could, but check out as we scroll down, here's someone from India. They're 10 and a half hours ahead of me. Um, I don't know that I could ever make that work during the school day, but maybe that teacher would mystery Skype with me. Um, just scroll down through here. You can see lots of different options to view more. Um, there's hundreds and hundreds of teachers. When you become a part of the educator community, you can put your name in this hat um, to be contacted by other teachers uh, for mystery Skype. The third option that many people um, really love about our community is our virtual field trip option. As you scroll down, you'll see lots of different options. Um, the first one right off the bat that catches my eyes, the Lisbon Zoo. Maybe you want to take your kids on a, a zoo field trip here at home, but you don't have any money to make that happen. This is a 100% free virtual field trip. You just scroll down, hit register for the field trip. And same thing with the, uh, the um, Skype lesson. A calendar is going to pop up. Let's say you want to go on that next uh, Wednesday. That might be a little bit soon because uh, today is um, right here. We're about a week out. I recommend trying to book at least two weeks out. So let's scroll ahead and see. Oh, there's some more availability in December. There's some more availability in uh, January. So let's say I wanted to take that trip on January the 24th um, and I want to go at 9 o'clock um, a.m. on Eastern Time. I would select that, hit request a session. Again, you can put a little message to um, the host there and request that session, zap it right on through. 
Sometimes the session may not have a calendar when you hit request for the virtual field trip. It may just ask you to send your specific times. Um, and that's really helpful when the lesson does that. It's because they're trying to craft that around your experience. Um, let me show you very briefly um, one that is like that. If you go back to this home page and you go to the um, virtual field trip tab, you can scroll down and I will show you there's one, a really unique one, visit a penguin breeding colony. Um, the lady's name that does this is Jean Pennycook. She is an um, art Antarctic explorer. When you hit register here, um, the box will pop up and it will ask you to send her some days and times that she can work with you. Um, this way she can craft your experience um, around what you need. Um, you notice here it says Antarctica is 13 hours ahead of Pacific time. So keep that in mind when you're requesting your session. You might have to um, set it up at a unique time for your class. You just put, uh, put your message in here to her, hit send, and it'll go right to her. And she'll be happy to get back in touch with you and, and set something up. Uh, the field trips are really amazing. So you, wanna, you just want to log into these right away and get started. The other option is the guest speaker option here. When you go to the guest speaker option, again, the filter search is there. So let's say you have a specific option that you want to um, look for, a specific subject that you want to look for. Let's say you're an ELA teacher and you want to connect with somebody in the reading and writing um, field. You click on reading and writing and up pops up different people who have signed on to be guest speakers in the, um, that category. And right off the bat, I just noticed this right here at the top. Jennifer Wolf Cam um, is an author. You can click on there and read about her profile and read about what she wants to offer to your students. Um, it says here she's um, writing, been writing for young children and adults from the Vermont College of Fine Arts. Um, and she's got some guest speaker opportunities. She may, may want to talk to you about publishing, about writing, about voice, about why to become an author, about what, the opportunities that writing has presented to her. Um, let's say you want to do that on November 30th. It tells you the availability there. If that's something that can work for you, you hit request a Skype session. It will quickly um, pop up. There's the time that we wanted. Again, you can put a message for her and request the session, and it will zap right through and build the connection for her. Um, all of these resources are 100% free, and they're available to you and the Microsoft Educator community. Um, but again, like I said, the first step for you getting all of these resources is to join the community. You need to go to education.microsoft.com and build that profile just like I taught you in the beginning. So once you get that um, educator community account created, then I hope that you'll look me up in the community, reach out to me on Facebook and Twitter, and I would be happy to help you uh, become uh, an expert in the community using Skype and helping you to make that um, your class globally connected. Thank you so much for um, being a part of the tutorial today and best of luck to you on your global adventures.